Hey, we are in Ezra chapter six and chapter seven. If you uh, remember uh, from the previous reading, uh, they're arguing. The people uh, there are fighting with the, the Israelites. They don't want them to rebuild. They're saying Cyrus never said to do this. And so now we find King Darius um, looking for the decree. Did King Cyrus really say that? Well, let's find out for sure. Uh, but in the meantime, they keep building. They, they don't stop. So let's jump into Ezra chapter 6. King Darius ordered someone to go through the old records kept in Babylonia. Finally, a scroll was found in Ekbatana, the capital of Media province, and it said, this official record will show that in the first year Cyrus was king, he gave orders to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem so that sacrifices and offerings could be presented there. It is to be built 90 feet high, 90 feet wide, with one row of wooden beams for each three rows of large stones, and the royal treasury will pay for everything. Then return to their proper places the gold and silver things that Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple and brought to Babylonia. King Darius sent this message. Governor Titani of Western Province and Shether Buzani, you and your advisors must stay away from the temple. Let the Jewish governor and the leaders rebuild it where it stood before and stop slowing them down. Starting right now, I'm ordering you to help the leaders pay by paying their expenses from the tax money collected in Western Province. And don't fall, fail to let the priests in Jerusalem have whatever they need each day so they can offer sacrifices to the God of heaven. Give them young bulls, rams, sheep, as well as wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil. I want them to be able to offer pleasing sacrifices to God and to pray for me and my family. If any of you don't obey this order, a wooden beam will be taken from your house and sharpened on one end. Then it will be driven through your body and your house will be torn down and turned into a garbage dump. I ask the Lord who is worshipped in Jerusalem to destroy any king or nation who tries either to change what I have said or to tear down his temple. I, Darius, give these orders and I expect them to be followed carefully. Governor Titani, Shether Bazani, and their advisors carefully obeyed King Darius. With great success, the Jewish leaders continued working on the temple while Haggai and Zechariah encouraged them by their preaching. And so the temple was completed at the command of the God of Israel and by the orders of King Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes of Persia. On the third day of the month of Adar, in the sixth year of the rule of Darius, the temple was finished. The people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and everyone else who had returned from exile were happy and celebrated as they dedicated God's temple. 100 bulls, 200 rams, and 400 lambs were offered as sacrifices at the dedication. Also, 12 goats were sacrificed as sin offerings for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then the priests and Levites were assigned their duties in God's temple in Jerusalem according to the instructions Moses had written. Everyone who had returned from exile celebrated Passover on the 14th day of the first month. The priests and Levites had gone through a ceremony to make themselves acceptable to lead in worship. Then some of them killed Passover lambs for those who had returned, including the other priests and themselves. The sacrifices were eaten by the Israelites who had returned and by the neighboring people who had given up the sinful customs of their nations in order to worship the Lord God of Israel. For seven days, they celebrated the festival of thin bread. Everyone was happy because the Lord God of Israel had made sure that the king of Assyria would be kind to them and help them build the temple. Much later, when Xerxes was king of Persia, Ezra came to Jerusalem from Babylonia. Ezra was the son of of Sariah, the grandson of Azariah. His other ancestors were, Hil were Hilkiah, Shalom, Zadok, eh Ahitub, Amariah, Azariah, Marioth, Sahariah, Uzai, Buki, Abshua, Phineas, Eleazar, and Aaron, the high priest. Ezra was an expert in the law that 
the Lord God of Israel had given to Moses, and the Lord made sure that the king gave Ezra everything he asked for. Other Jews, including priests, Levites, musicians, the temple guards, and servants, came to Jerusalem with Ezra. This happened during the seventh year that Artaxerxes was king. God helped Ezra, and he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month of the seventh year after leaving Babylonia on the first day of the month. Ezra had spent his entire life studying and obeying the law of the Lord and teaching it to others. Ezra was a priest and an expert in the laws and commands of the Lord that the Lord had given to Israel. And one day, King Artaxerxes gave Ezra a letter which said, Greetings from the great King Artaxerxes to Ezra the priest and expert in the teachings of God of heaven. Any of the people of Israel or their priests or Levites in my kingdom may go with you to Jerusalem if they want to. My seven advisors and I agree that you may go to Jerusalem and Judah to find out if the laws of the your God are being obeyed. When you go, take the silver and gold that I and my advisors are freely giving to the God of Israel, whose temple is in Jerusalem. Take the silver and gold that you collect from everywhere in Babylonia. Also, take the gifts that your own people and priests have so willingly contributed for the temple of your God in Jerusalem. Use the money carefully to buy the best bulls, rams, lambs, grain, and wine. Then sacrifice them on the altar at God's temple in Jerusalem. If any silver or gold is left, you and your people may use it for whatever pleases your God. Give your God the art other articles that have been contributed for use in his temple. If you need to get anything else from the temple, you may have the money you need from the royal treasury. Ezra, you are a priest and an expert in the laws of the God of heaven. And I order all the treasurers in Western province to do their very best to help you. They will be allowed to give you as much as 7,500 pounds of silver, 500 bushes of wheat, 550 gallons of wine, 550 gallons of olive oil, and all the salt you need. They must provide whatever the God of heaven demands for his temple so that he won't be angry with me and with the kings who rule after me. We want you to know that no priests, Levites, musicians, guards, temple servants, or any other temple workers will have to pay any kind of taxes. Ezra, use the wisdom of God has given you and choose officials and leaders to govern the people of Western province. These leaders should know God's laws and have them taught to anyone who doesn't know them. Everyone who fails to obey God's law or the king's law will be punished without pity. They will be either be executed or put in prison or forced to leave their country or have all they own taken away. Because King Artaxerxes was so kind, Ezra said, Praise the Lord God of our ancestors. He made sure that the king honored the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. God has told the king, his advisors, and his powerful officials to treat me with kindness. The Lord God has helped me, and I have been able to bring many Jewish leaders back to Jerusalem. And so we see how things are starting to take place. I wanted to show you one little map of how all this has, has happened. Um, so here we have Jerusalem. Here we have Babylon. And King Darius, when he orders this, the writings of King Cyrus to be found, they're found all the way up here in Ekbatana. Okay, so they've kept these records and uh, the people are traveling back and forth um, to get this temple built. So it's all pretty cool how things have taken place and how good of uh, record keeping they were, were having. Uh, so that we can find this kind of stuff out and I'll be able to look back accurately. Um, it took, took them four years to, to rebuild uh, the temple, uh, which, isn't, which isn't too bad. And remember, when Solomon dedicated this temple, he uh, donated, sacrificed 142,000 animals. Here, uh, a big difference. 712 animals, I, but you know, it's just not as wealthy. They're poor. They've been, um, 
working hard uh, to get all this done. And so this concludes kind of like the first stage of everything that's taken place as, as, you, as, as the Jewish people come back. Uh, a lot of them don't come back. A lot of them stay in, in Babylon and Persia. Uh, but now they're, they're coming back and this, this transition, this first stage has taken about a generation. Um, but we're going to find that although uh, the kings are supportive, uh, the Jews aren't always right in line with what should be taking place. I hope you have a great day. Bye.